Welcome third graders to our animal lesson today. So we are going to be moving from invertebrates to vertebrates this week. Grab your animal reading packet as you're gonna follow along with me in your packet. And let's get started. So last time we met, we talked about invertebrates, which are animals that do not have a backbone. That's right. Well, this week we are gonna be talking about, and going forward, all the different vertebrate animals. And what do we do to classify them? There are five groups of vertebrate animals called the reptiles, amphibians, fish, mammals, and birds. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about them. Remember, our vertebrates are animals that have a backbone or vertebrae, which is that spinal column. So you will go to the um, second full page in your packet. It's also on page 59 if you want to use the page numbers at the bottom. You're going to see this paragraph that says classifying vertebrates. Let's read it together. Horses, rabbits, sharks, goldfish, snakes, eagles, and turtles are all vertebrates. They all have backbones, but they have lots of differences as well. Zoologists believe that all of the vertebrates on Earth can be classified into five major groups or classes. The five classes of vertebrates are fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. And today we're going to talk specifically about the first group or first class called the fish class. So here are some examples of the five classes, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals. Say those with me so you can start to learn them. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals. Let's dive in deeper to our first group of animals, the fish group. So go ahead and turn to the section on fish on page 60 or on the back of page two. And we will learn a little bit more about what makes a fish special from the others. Fish are the largest class of vertebrates on earth. Oh, pausing, do you remember the largest class of invertebrates? Hopefully you said insects. Remember, insects are the largest class of invertebrates. Vertebrates, meaning having a backbone, fish is the largest class. There are more kinds of fish in the world than all the other kinds of vertebrates added together. Earth is covered mostly by water, so it makes sense that fish are the most common of the vertebrates. Look at this picture here of Earth. All of the blue that you see represents the water. And if you're thinking about it, look at this. This is a little portion of the land. Here's the United States and here's South America, North America. Look at all of the blue compared to the land. If you're looking, you should be saying there's definitely more water on Earth. In fact, almost three-fourths of Earth is covered with water. That's 75%. If you think of a dollar, that's three-quarters out of the four of the earth is covered in water. There is more water than land. Fish have adapted to almost every water habitat on earth, except for some really hot springs and the very salty Dead Sea, which we'll talk about when we get to regions later this year. Aside from those two places, fish can live anywhere. They live in salt water like the oceans, and freshwater like lakes and rivers that are on our continents. All right, let's talk more about what makes fish unique. There are many different types and sizes of fish, but they all have several important things in common. 
Fish are aquatic, say that word with me, aquatic animals, meaning that they spend their lives underwater. Aquatic means underwater. Fish are cold-blooded. So think back to where we talked about warm-blooded and cold-blooded. Their body temperature changes with the temperature of the water. So cold-blooded means that they change with their water temperature. Like other animals, fish need to breathe oxygen, just like you and I. But fish do not have lungs like people and they do not breathe oxygen from the air. They don't breathe like you and I do where we take a breath and it goes into our, our lungs. Instead, they have gills just behind their heads. Fish gills take oxygen out of the water so that fish can breathe. But gills do not work well outside water. They cannot take oxygen out of the air. They only can take it out of the water. A fish will die quickly within several minutes if it is removed from water. So right here, if you're looking at this picture of the fish are the gills. And here is where the water passes back and forth. And as it does so, these gills are designed to take out the oxygen. But again, if a fish comes out of water, air will pass through there but the gills don't take the oxygen out of the air. Other components of the fish that you see here are their fins on the bottom, their dorsal fin on the top, dorsal means back, their tail fin back here that helps to them swim, and that their body here is covered in scales. Here is a close-up picture of the gills of a fish. So you can see these little lines here, and that's where that water goes underneath and the fish pulls the oxygen out. You're gonna be watching later today this video to learn a lot more about how fish breathe. Fish have scales that cover their skin. The scales protect the skin and help fish move easily through the water. Fish also use the different fins on their body and their tails to swim. They are able to glide through the water, rapidly changing direction by using their fins and tail. So those scales that we saw covering their body are actually round and smooth and usually very hard. That's like their outer covering, like our skin on our body, but they have scales. And that, those scales, allow the water to slide right over the fish as they swim. Now we talked about the fins, we looked at them. The fin on the top called the dorsal fin is used for steering, so to keep them going the direction they want. The fin on the back, their tail fin is used for their speed, and then the one on the bottom are used to balance them so they don't fall over left or right. Most fish hatch from eggs. Fish eggs do not have a shell like a regular egg you think of. They are soft and jelly-like. The mother fish usually lays the eggs and then leaves them. So here's a picture of little baby fish inside their soft jelly-like eggs. And the fish will live here until they're ready to hatch. And then they come out and swim. They do not rely on their mother or father to feed them or take care of them. So here's a close-up of the scales. As you can see, they look kind of like they're hard and they are overlapping, meaning that they're going over top of each other. Here are some of the fins. These look like they're the under fins for balance. And here's another picture of some fish eggs. You can actually see the little teeny fish here. There's their eyeballs inside those soft jelly eggs waiting to hatch. You're also going to watch this video later on to learn more about fish and their fins. All right, I'm gonna read a couple sentences and I want you to think about, does this animal qualify or classify as a fish or not? So here's a picture. I'm a jellyfish, here it is. My soft body has no bones 
and I have neither gills nor lungs for breathing. Oxygen moves easily through my thin skin. Sometimes I lay eggs, but I also give live birth. I am cold-blooded and will surely die if left out of water. Is this animal a fish or not? You should say no, it is not a fish. Even though it has the word fish in its name, jellyfish, it is an invertebrate because it does not have a backbone and fish have backbones. Let's look at this picture. I am a cold-blooded eel. My slimy snake-like body is covered in scales and hides my backbone from view. I have gills and fins and I lay my eggs in the water where I live. Am I a fish? Yep, an eel is a fish. It has all of the qualifications. It is a vertebrate, it has scales, it is cold-blooded, it has gills and fins and lays eggs. So an eel is a fish. I am a seahorse. My long body is encased in bony rings. I breathe with gills and my fins help me glide through the water. I am the male or the boy and I carry eggs in my pouch until they are ready. Am I a fish? Yes, a seahorse is a fish. A seahorse does have a vertebrae. It has bony rings and a backbone. It has gills. It has fins and it lays eggs. So a seahorse is a fish. I am a whale, one of the largest animals of the sea. I breathe with lungs and give birth to live babies. Even though I am not covered in hair, I do have a few bristles of hair here and there on my head. Am I a fish? No, a whale is not a fish. It is a vertebrate, meaning it does have a backbone, but it breathes with lungs, not gills. It does not have scale, it has scales, it has hair. And even though it lives under the water, it does not have scales, I already said that, sorry. It does not have gills and it does not lay eggs. It has live babies. All right, the last one is a shark. Now this one's kind of tricky. People are always unsure about a shark. So let's think about it. Is a shark a fish? So do they live in water? Yep. Do they have gills on the side? Yes, they do. Here's their gills. Do they have scaly skin? Yes, they do. Do they have tails and fins? Yep, a shark is a fish. Now a shark is a special type of fish because it is the only type of fish that lay, does not lay eggs but actually has live babies. So even though they do not lay eggs, a shark has all of the correct qualifications to be classified as a fish. So let's just review. What are the characteristics that make fish unique? One, they are aquatic, which means they live underwater. They are cold-blooded, meaning their body temperature changes with the water. They have a backbone or also vertebrates. They breathe using gills on the side of their body. They are able to move through the water using their fins and tails. Their body is covered in scales and they lay eggs. If you found an animal that met all of those characteristics, they would fall under the class of fish. I hope you learned something new today. We'll learn more later.